And I am at the Commvault booth with an amazing cast of characters. Uh, really excited to dive into all things Commvault here at RSAC. Michael, maybe start with some introductions. Who are you and um, how's your RSA this week? All right, Michael Stemp. I'm a senior director of product and ecosystem strategy at Commvault. And as you can tell by my voice, it's been very good. Lots of conversations, <laughs> uh, amazing amount of people here. Uh, it, it's been a lot of fun so far. It's a lot of fun, a lot of learning. Um, what's your portfolio? What's your job at Commvault? What's your mission? Sure, so uh, deal with strategy for the company and how we integrate with different partners, different ecosystems around in the area. Uh, so that was one of the uh, ways that we brought in Clean Room, which is one of our new announcements here this week, is uh, Clean Room Recovery, which is a partnership with Microsoft, so we can uh, enable testing of your cyber recovery plans, your tabletop exercises, into a unified place that's easy to set up, uh, uh, takes away all the complexities, take away a lot of the costs associated with that testing. Phenomenal. Well, it's an amazing proposition. I want to dive into it. Michelle, sorry to put you on the spot here as a customer, but thanks for volunteering to do this chat. Maybe introduce yourself, your interesting role. It's a bit of a hybrid CIO, CSO, if I understand, and your team. Sure, great. So uh, my name is Michelle Bushman, and I'm what I like to call a full stack CIO. So um, I manage the role of CIO, CISO, and CTO for American Pacific Mortgage. We're a top 10 mortgage lender. Uh, we lend across the United States, and our mission is to um, give Americans the you know dream of uh, home ownership. Um, and uh, yes, my role is a little bit unique. Um, not only do I house all three of those responsibilities, but I also grew up on the business side. So um, I've actually done just about every operational function in the mortgage process. Um, which gives me a unique, um, a, you know, a, a unique perspective on where our risk lies um, and how our operations Welcome work. To the Fantastic. Well, I look forward to diving into some of your insights here. Great. And last but not least, Alex from Commvault. Alex, you are the resident hacker. Is that what we, yeah, we call you? Like no, yeah, what's exactly. your official title here uh, at yeah, Commvault? My name's Alex Janis. I'm the field CTO at Commvault, and this my focus is cybersecurity. Uh, I have uh, what I would what I call is an uh, offensive security background, and so I try to talk to our clients and also internal to the company to give perspective about what attackers' motives are, what the mindset is, what their capabilities are, to try to stay ahead of it, and also help clients understand that perspective as well. And you have an interesting background. Maybe share a little bit about your biography because it's a little unusual. Yeah, so I started off very hardcore uh, technical computer science and uh, cybersecurity. Uh, I spent about 12 years at NSA where I was an analyst Thank and you. A master operator. And then after that, I did a work at a startup where we did some uh, tailored cybersecurity services. And now I'm here at Commvault because I feel like um, the product, the, the solutions that we have uh, help make things, uh, help raise the risks and the costs of the bad guys and help uh, clients uh, survive uh, operating under duress. Wow, that, that's quite a mission. And Michael, maybe start with you, we'll dive in a little deeper. Why is a new playbook required here at RSA? Why do we need to throw out the old playbook and reinvent one, which you're doing at Combo? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, for years, uh, people would test their disaster recovery plans. They, uh, you know, quarterly, yearly, they, they did it for years. And that's the only way you really know what you don't know, right? You've got to test it, you got to put it under stress. And the problem is, is that with cyber recovery, people haven't done that because of the pure complexities in this hybrid enterprise that we're in. Uh, it used to be you'd have, you know, maybe two, two physical locations, you'd cross replicate, super easy. You could plan it, you figure it out, you could do follow weather maps. With cyber attacks, it's totally different. You have, to, you have to think everything's suspect. You have to challenge your hardware, your software, your data. Everything has to be looked at differently than you would in a DR. And that's why I really see our, just a whole added level of complexities. Plus the interconnects you need, these, these interfaces between on-prem and AWS and Azure. How would you even test something with that many complexities? And so with Commvault's any-to-any -any technology, we can take those VMs from AWS EC2 and move them over into the clean room or on-prem from VMware, move them into the clean room. And that way I have a consolidated place to do all of my testing. I don't have to buy a bunch of hardware beforehand, which is what any other vendor would have you do. We spin it up in the cloud, when you're done, you throw it away and it's all gone. 
And, and the nice thing is also is because we spin it up in the cloud, you know it's clean. No one's ever been in there before because it's a brand new tenant that no one's ever had access to. Well, fantastic approach. And um, Michelle, let's shift gears a little bit from technology to culture. Maybe talk about the team you lead and have built. What's your philosophy on staying ahead, staying ahead of the curve, and um, staying on top of all these threats that we're seeing here? at RSA? Yeah, so um, I've been with American Pacific Mortgage for 10 years, and so I pretty much have built our cybersecurity program from the ground up. Um, I like to say I'm on version 2.0. There's been a lot of change in tooling um, and capabilities that are out there. Um, I, I do tend to look more to providers that can give me um, better capabilities with because I do run with a smaller staff. Um, so, you know, I do look for partners that are the best of breed technologies in different areas to make sure that, you know, I have the assistance I need and the security level I need. And I will tell you, from a cultural perspective, it took a long time to get there. Yeah. When I first started at, at American Pacific Mortgage, you know, I was always talking about, let's move our email to cloud. And none of the engineers wanted to do that. Um, but, you know, I'm sitting there trying to explain to them the value in moving our solutions to a place, especially commoditized solutions, that you know we've got at that time. I had like three or four guys. I'm like, do you think you can really do a better job of hosting this than Microsoft can with all the money they have to pump into their um, you know environments, right? Same sort of thing from a backup perspective. We were originally a Commvault customer um, where we had an on-prem solution. Once they they actually had their SaaS offering, I'm like, let's look at this. We're going to move over to that, and um, wasn't quite so much um, pushback at that point because they saw the value of it. And I will tell you, with COVID, the understanding of why Michelle wanted to move things to the cloud uh, was like a big light bulb for a lot of them to say, wow, we were able to go off-prem. I had already moved everyone to laptops. We had most everything externally accessible via the cloud. We just basically moved everybody off. The only thing we needed to do was to make sure we had enough uh, bandwidth into the data center for the VPN connections because they would significantly increase when we sent people home. Um, so, but yeah, building the culture. The other thing I would say, um, which is super important, and maybe this is what makes me a little unique as well, having both the role of the CISO and the CIO, is those teams all need to work together. They shouldn't be offensive. Um, you know, they are, you know, one of the biggest, um, I think accomplishments I feel that I've done at APM is the build of our engineering team. Of uh, you know, it's it's amazing if somebody were to come in from the outside and hear some of the conversations and the conflict that we have, um, they'd like, whoa, what's going on here? But that's exactly what I wanted to build the trust amongst the team. Everybody has nice. a voice. Um, they all come from different perspectives and different thinking. And by having that, you know, um, that great, co healthy conflict, we can come up with the best decisions. And I do rely on my team significantly because I'm not the technical practitioner. Um, uh, but I always tell them I know a lot and I have a deep Rolodex. <laughs> so, uh, but culture is matters and that teamwork. Wonderfully, well said. Congratulations on Thank all you. the success. And Alex, you, you're uh, in the field as a CTO, getting your hands dirty. What are you hearing on the front lines of cyber defense from customers, but also partners like Microsoft and many others? Uh, I'm sorry, I, mean, I couldn't hear part of what you said. You said something about hearing something. Uh, yeah, what are you hearing from customers and partners firsthand uh, on the front lines of, of cybersecurity? What are they telling you on the day-to-day -day challenges, their, their desires, requests? What what are, what are you what are you hearing? Yeah, I think you know I think that the you know the problem is pretty well understood, but I think that there's always like a struggle to explain the the problem uh, upwards to, to, mm. to so that so that the decision makers who are investing in their companies uh, investing in your team understand like what they're up against. So for instance, if you look at like the amount of money that ransomware criminals uh, cyber criminals make. It's a huge amount of money, and that's only a small portion of cyber crime. The billions of dollars, and I don't know what your budget is, but I guarantee you it's not anywhere near <laughs> even half of a billion dollars, no, right? No, no, no. Right, and so that's the thing that, that I feel like, you know, we, we you know, we look at this, it's a, there's a lot of great stuff out there, but it's all very technically focused. But like the stuff that you were saying, I think is more important to focus on the people, the culture, you know, having the arguments while you're at in peace, basically, the more you sweat in peace, the less you bleed more. Having that discourse now will help you so that when you do have uh, an adversary attack you, you're going to be able to function that much more better. 
right? You've already worked out a lot of those kinks. And so to me, I think that's what a lot of people are responding to, wanting to understand why this stuff matters, like why Cobalt matters, right? There's a lot of technology out there that's so that's very, um, you know, uh, detection or preventative nature. But in reality, I think that I think the motto everyone needs to live by is you're breached and you don't know it yet. Eventually, they'll get around to telling you when they're going to collect that money from you. And so that means you should live that way the whole time before they tell you. And when you do that, you can do all these other things and they'll help you. But eventually, when that stuff doesn't, when it doesn't work because of whatever reason, because they're also, they know how this stuff works and they're defeating it, obfuscating from it, eventually you will need to have a cyber resilience plan. You'll need to actually get back to business. And so that's what I think everyone is responding positively. Well, Understanding what really matters and knowing that there are there's something that will actually focus on getting you back to business. Well said, wow, really great insight. And Michael, um, when the fun and games are over here at RSA, you're back to work. What are you excited about uh, looking it's, forward it's, to it's, over the next weeks and months? And, in terms of rolling out this technology to partners and customers. Yeah, so the demand's been incredible. Yeah. Um, you know, we've really hit on something that people were needing. They understood that they needed to test. I think the next big phase is to see where we're going with this. We have some huge announcements coming out, some partnerships with some security companies, more, more integrations with Microsoft. We're going to be elevating Cleanroom from just this uh, design of, of where I can go to test my things to, you know, uh, failover for production events if something happens on-prem, forensic analysis, uh, secured comms. We're going we're to take this to where the customers need us to be uh, in the day and age of the cyber attacks that we have. Okay, can't wait to see it in action. And Michelle, what about you? What's, what's on your radar for the rest of the quarter, the year? What are you prioritizing and how do you spend your time and your team's time? Yeah, no, absolutely. So. Um, Definitely, we're on version 2.0 of our cybersecurity program, so we're actually right in the midst of uh, making wow. that transition to new tool sets, um, new dashboards, which I'm actually super excited about, so I nice. can actually have more data to share with the board. Um, and then um, I also have, you know, in, in my CTO role, uh, looking at modernization and automation of the mortgage origination process, because, uh, you know, uh, typical to our industry, we're very always delayed because we're highly regulated, but there's some really great tools um, coming out that should be able to uplift our organization so that when we get the next big, you know, low rate environment and we get a lot of production, that we could scale our business leveraging our technology solutions um, and hire fewer people. Um, and, uh, you know, then of course that equates to more profitability. Um, and, you know, just one thing to say about the, the solution, the clean room solution, I'm super excited about it as a Commvault customer. Um, in the ability for me and my team, because we are small, to actually do more testing. Right. Um, you know, usually we do it once a year, just like everybody else, because of time. Um, but I, I'm a big believer that it's not if, it's, you know, it's when. Um, and, and it's very different than disaster recovery. Uh, and so we need to have those kinds of tools. And I'm also looking forward to some of the tool sets that they're going to be integrating in there that will actually allow me to recover my applications as well. Um, so that the time to rebuild your entire infrastructure reduces significantly so that we can keep the business operating. Such important work. Good luck. Onwards and upwards. Thank you. Have a great RSA. And what about you, Alex, on a final note? What are you excited about uh, over the next few weeks and months? Yeah, I mean, I, I lean in on that testing thing. I think yeah. that in my early days in cybersecurity, uh, with the best of intentions, people created all these mechanisms to, to determine or, or evaluate somebody's security posture, tabletops, and over time, these things get watered down, or they have meaning, but there's like no, there's no comprehensive to it, so like a pen test usually goes to you get access and then you're done, but you don't comprehensively look at the posture of a client. And so I think things like testing allows someone to actually, like, here is a scenario of what's going to happen, and you can randomize it and make it as real and scary as possible, and actually follow through and see how it actually works. And more than likely, what I think you'll find is you thought it was going to be this quick to recover, and somebody thought it was maybe a little bit longer, and in reality, you've tested it, you found that it's bigger, you find these problems, you fix them, and again, the more you uh, sweat and peace, the less you bleed more. So you'll make these tweaks and improve on all of that. Absolutely. Well said. Well, thanks guys for being on the spot here, live with all the chaos and the noise and the confusion. Appreciate your insights and uh, congrats to the amazing work you're doing at Convo. Thank you.